back, or if you're new to this channel, just welcome. Today I want to have a closer look at this beautiful Rhine Metal KST with mahogany woodgrain paint. I'll get into some of the qualities of this, but first I want to take on some history. Rhine Metal was founded on the 13th of April 1899. It was then named, and sorry to all German speaking people for how I'm about to butcher this, Rheinische Metallwaren und Maschinenfabrik Aktiengesellschaft. It was created to supply munitions to the German Empire. This would largely be the only thing they made for the first decades to come, but after World War I, like most German factories, they were forbidden from making weapons. After this, Rheinmetall made lots of civilian things, such as typewriters, as well as acquired several other machine production companies that were under after the war. For example, you may have noticed that on most Rheinmetall machines, this one included, the production label on the frame says Rheinmetall Borsig. And just to acknowledge this with some history, this became the full company name after Rheinmetall obtained the locomotive manufacturer Borsig in 1933. This was just one of several acquisitions they made. Another notable one, more relevant to typewriters, was the company Stoiber. They were acquired by Rheinmetall in 1931. Along with the purchase of this company, they bought the rights for Stoiber's design for a portable typewriter that Rheinmetall would start producing under the name Rheinmetall Portable, or Klein, which is German for small. After beginning their portable line, they would also produce the Rheinmetall KST. According to some sources, KST is an abbreviation for Kleinschreibmaschine mit Tabulator, or small typewriter with tabulator. This model was exactly the same as the portable, but it would have a tab system with the feature to create and unset tab points on the carriage by flicking a switch either back or forth. A superb engineering choice on both the portable and the KST is that the carriage comes off super easy. This makes cleaning and servicing the machine very simple, which is always nice. Simply flip the two levers on each side of the rear of the machine open like so, and then just lift the carriage straight up. Some wiggling can help. Typing on this machine, I find that the resistance in the keys are surprisingly heavy. I've tried later Rheinmetall models before, and they felt lighter than this. I do not know if this is a feature of the 30s model that changed later, or if there is something about this machine in particular that just makes it a bit stiff. The resistance feels equally distributed throughout the movement of the key, so it is a smooth experience. The circle-shaped plastic keys are not ideal for my fingers and personal taste, but I can type fairly confidently on it even so. The return arm is quite standard feeling. It's a bit short, but is typical for portables of its age. The mechanism to roll the platen is decent, and where some machines feel like they merely push the platen around, this feels like it properly clicks forward. It's a robust construction. One design flaw with the Rhine Metal Portables is that the type arm rest is held up by rubber nails. This was in its day likely to reduce reverberations from the type arms falling back down and stop it from traveling to the metal in the machine. Problem is, this rubber can go hard if stored poorly. If it gets hard enough, they straight up shatter. In these cases, the type arm rest will fall down and will need a bit of a hack to position back in its correct position. Other than that, the machine is not just a well-performing design. It is quite the looker. It is not among my favorites in typing feel and general use, but I still bring it out over others that are, just because it looks so nice. That was all for this time. Today's video is a bit short, as I'm pressed to do other things these days, but I'll come back stronger in the future. That's a promise. And I'll see you then.